There's a moon metal right there. Hooray. Hello there, everybody. This is Seawatt the Plan One here. And how did I miss that moon metal? So, anyway, last time on Let's Play Sonic Unleashed, we did more Warhog, yay, at Cool Edge Night in order to search for another dark, or not dark guy, uh, Gaia Key that we needed to access to Halaska Temple. So now we're going to take on the Dark Moray, as it is, of course, the thing standing in our way to getting to the Halaska Temple. So, let's go. how Chip is just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take him on. Nope, nope, I'm gonna do my karate. This canister thing looks real cold. Anyway, uh, this is the Dark Moray, the boss of Halaska. And of course, it's another Werehog boss, so you know what that means. Beating of a lifetime. So anyway, what you're gonna wanna do here for this boss... Yeah. What you're gonna wanna do for this boss fight is, of course, you want to freeze those eel guys that, of course, Sonic likes to refer to them as, of course... Uh, you want to freeze them, basically, because the Dark Moray is surrounded by a shield, and, of course, being that shield, uh, you want to break it, because that is a very bad thing. Shields are very bad. So, anyway, now that we're actually, de now that we actually deactivated the shield, we can go ahead and get the rest of these moon and sun metals, and that way we won't have any way to worry about them for, like, some time. So, anyway. Now the Dark Moray is gonna get more pissed and send more of these, uh, eel guys that will protect the shields, of course. And, of course, you have to freeze them. You gotta freeze them more and more. That's what you do. Unless you get the Dark Moray to freeze them, because that's the thing. The Dark Moray can actually freeze the eels. Or, the, rather, they can freeze themselves should you attack them. And that's kind of a stupid thing, but hey, I'm not complaining. It makes the boss fight last a bit longer. <laughs> or it makes the boss fight far less shorter, actually. But regardless of which, now we gotta attack the back of this thing. And of course, with that in mind, we gotta... Ah! Yeah, so take an advice to what Sonic just said. Maybe you can free maybe you can freeze the Dark Moray to get him to stop with the whole spinning around right round baby like a record baby right round 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 thing. Yeah. So take that advice because you are going to need it. So anyway, now that eel's gonna pop out there, and of course that means I'm free I'm freezing a lot in this uh, boss fight actually. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's kind of the annoying thing about this boss fight. You're going to be seeing yourself freeze a lot should the eels attack you and stuff. Thankfully, once you destroy the eels, they stay destroyed until, like, you know, the next phase of the fight. So you don't have to worry about that, at least. And now we get to the hard part. Oh, boy. So, basically, you have to wait for the Dark Mori to stop shooting those ice thingies. And then you're going to have to wait for him to stop doing that whole thing where he breathes ice. So basically get on the inside. You want to wait until he gets on the inside. And then try to do your YYYAAA combo thing. In order to, for him to fully stop like that. And that's how you win the boss fight. Well, at least I did better than my last take. <laughs> yes, this is actually take two of the episode because, to be honest, my boss fight with this was just really stupid. In fact, I'm going to actually show you how long it took me on the first take. Take a look. Hmm, not so bad. 
Yes, that is how long it took. It took me almost seven minutes to beat this guy. And I thought that was just really stupid. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, my commentary wasn't saved because I usually delete my commentary on, like, dumb takes. But hey, at least I showed that take, at least. But now I want to actually upgrade my speed on Sonic. I mean, I normally don't do that, but hey, I might as well. And I might as well upgrade my shield. So anyway, now that we have that done, let's go ahead and go to the temple. So that's one more piece of the planet done. So now I'm going to actually try to buy something from here. And I really hope it's here. Actually, prehistoric ice, actually. Hmm. Like, I still haven't, I still haven't seen, like, what the heck uh, Chip needs in order to get the reward for him, at least. Uh, things just cool here. Just a thing if you want a cool drink, people here don't. <laughs> Frozen mean permanent. Good luck defrosting this one. Canned horror. Uh, I think I may actually want uh, the meat. And let's see, how many can I buy? I can buy 13. But I'll buy 10 of them. Yeah, I might as well go for broke. I mean, I'm not doing anything else with them. And I might as well give them to Chip because why? <laughs> yep, because why? Because that's all I ever do. Just give things to Chip. I almost chipped a tooth. Oh, I think that's actually it. I think that's actually it. I think you have to give the thing the thing. Uh, I wonder if Eggman's got any friends. Think he think he's is friends with robots? Yeah, I wouldn't be too sure about that, dude. Uh, literally, literally. Uh, his two only robots in Sonic Boom are Orbot and Cubot, and even he, he's not friends with them. Uh. It's gotta be nice having stretching arms. Yeah, that's the thing that I forgot to touch upon. How in the name of, I don't know, Zanza? How the heck? How in the heck in the name of Zanza does Sonic have have stretchy arms? He's like Monkey D. Luffy or something. It's like, how did he even do that? But I'm sure you'll find a fan theory somewhere. Make a comment about it. Not that I'm telling you to, but yeah, I'm telling you to. <laughs> Oh, whatever. I like feedback. Whatever. Okay. So anyway, uh, I don't think it's the uh, perma meat that does it, unfortunately. So it could be either the canned horror or the prehistoric ice. Either or will. Either or will do. I might as well go for broke. Might as well just buy. Might as well just grind for rings off screen. Maybe. Probably the prehistoric ice will do the trick. Probably. Tastes so yummy. I haven't. I, that it almost says historic history. I'd say about three thousand years. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting little bit of a thing right there you got there, Chip old buddy old pal. <laughs> but whatever. But of course now, as with the tried and true tradition of restoring a planet, we have to go and of course alert the professor of what was happened. Uh, what was happened? Okay. So I'll meet you guys at the professor's lab. Ah, no! Security! I do not want you to scan my computer! No! Stop! Stop it! Ugh. Jesus, that was... Okay, that was a thing that happened. Hello, my good man! I say I do indeed have restored another piece of the planet! Sonic? Another piece restored, and another Gaia Temple located, my boy! The next temple lies in Shamar, Sonic. This time, I will join you myself. I have a research facility here, there in Shamar. <laughs> now then, my friends, everyone ready to depart? I'll meet you all there. Well then, do you have any further questions? Yeah, I'm good. 
So now Professor Pickle will actually move his things to another room. To another place, or another continent, or whatever. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter! is confirmed on all seven continents. Electromagnetic homing signals are locked on. All units converging on point zero. Yes, yes, perfect! Gathering Dark Gaia's pieces is such a pain. I'll have them come to me instead! A brilliant shift in perspective. An idea worthy of Dr. Eggman, super genius! <laughs> Your skill at self-aggrandizement is unparalleled. <laughs> Silence! Activate the Dark Gaia Fusion Furnace! And while you're at it, get those energy conversion circuits warmed up. Understood. Commencing Project Dark Gaia. Requesting final clearance. Granted! <laughs> Finally, my ambitions will be achieved! <laughs> Uh-oh, looks like Eggman's got something planned. So, anyway, here we are in a brand new continent automatically. This is Shamar. Clearly based on, you know, desert countries or whatever. But first, hey, it's the guy! Ah, we meet him again! <laughs> Hello there. How you d doing? He's a pretty comfortable around you now, eh? Thanks a lot! C c can I help you? Uh, let's see. Uh, what are you doing? T traveling s salesman. That's what we do. We are told over the world and together the world of mysterious things to us all. Go ahead and take a look at our wares. What you could if we had anything left to us sell now. Oh, s sorry. We should get the new stock in before next time, eh? You should take a look then. Well, see you around somewhere out there. Somewhere out there. Okay. So, anyway. Uh, so now introduces a little bit of a trick that pretty much been kind of known but only recently discovered or popular or made popular probably uh this is the Wentels trick of course i don't have any money right now but by the way this is sweet music how do you like it uh uh when when the blah, 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 what am i trying to say okay so whenever you see Wentos in a random continent always be sure to check to check out his wares because he sells things for a discounted price. Yeah, this is the best way to get yourself some chili dogs for a discounted price. So you can feed them to Sonic so he'll get plenty of experience. Only real warning though. Once you talk to Wentos, he'll be gone and he'll disappear off to a random continent. Unfortunately though, the continent that he will go to next is always random. So you just have to keep on guessing and then you'll eventually run into him. So, be persistent, but you mustn't be careless. So anyway, yeah, this is Shamar. This is pretty much the desert continent, and it's actually a really awesome looking desert continent. Plus, you know, the music, man. It's all filled with saxophone goodness. And you guys know I love my saxophone at this point. <laughs> Sorry, I just love me some saxophone. I don't know why, but... It's only my recent discovery that I freaking love the saxophone in, like, my video game music. And, by the way, I don't know what metal that was. And, oh, okay, it was a moon metal, okay. Um, unlike most continents, actually, there are actually four of these in the hub world. And not in the entrance stage. So, yeah, try your best to look for them. Because you're gonna be here a while. Because Shamar is pretty much the largest of the, uh... 
of worlds that, you know, Sonic can walk around in. Thankfully, of course, and like I've been saying a lot, they are condensed, so there's really no need to worry about, you know, getting lost or whatever. There aren't any, like, you know, narrow passage passageways that you can take. Well, some of them are. This game, this hub world is more, you know, explorer heavy, pretty much. So, you can go around and discover a lot of things, actually. But don't worry, they don't make it, they don't make it in, like, such a way that it's confusing or anything, like in Sonic 06. No, it's actually much better. Much better. Look at that, I already have three Moo Medals already, making good progress here, and I think the fourth one is... No, it's not over here. Uh, yeah, good luck trying to get the Sun Medals, by the way. <laughs> yeah, good luck trying to find them. So, we're pretty much at the place where we, where we need to go here. Uh, we, we clearly saw briefly that Amy was there, so she's moved along with Professor Pickle as well. But before we do that, uh, we might as well go in here and rob the place. Might as well rob the place dry of everything. <laughs> or not, you know, just... Yeah, you know. <laughs> I keep saying you know, I should stop. But anyway, hey Amy, how's it going, buddy? Hee <laughs> hee, I came along with the professor too. Wherever you go, I'll follow you. Lucky you. Yes, lucky you. Lucky Sonic. You always have a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, if you, if you, it, uh, like, this isn't even, like, you know, uh, this is not the Sonic Boom, Amy, you're probably all used to by now. And this is actually a lot more cramped, dude, uh, Professor Pickle, this is actually a lot more cramped, man. Good day. Good day. Welcome to my lab. Any trouble flying, finding the place, my boy? I know you just arrived, but... Had you had a look around the area yet? Sonic? Ah, and you should also be able to visit Empire City, next to Shamar. That's another spot you'll likely want to investigate, Sonic. Well then, do you have any further qu- No, I don't. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to grind for rings because I still need the TV, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's gonna be a thing. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, you probably can tell, but I'm not keen on, like, uh, grinding up for rings. I mean, it's easy, but, you know. But it's just that I have to play through stages over and over again just to get the amount of rings I need. Plus, I still need to find, like, where whatever the heck food you need to give to Chip. So, yeah, that's what you need to do in order to give food to Chip. <laughs> just to find the food. But of course, with all that being done, uh, here we are in Shamar Night. We got another really awesome track for Shamar. And that's where the Sun Metal is. And we actually have level 6 uh, Sun Metals. Holy crap. Uh, we're pretty much almost at the required level for uh, Sun Metals here. Remember, you need level 7 Sun Metals to at least access the final level of the game. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to let you listen to that saxophone. Just, oh my god, I love it so much. Like, if it was any indication, I freaking love the music in Mario Kart 8 because this, it made me appreciate the saxophone more. But just, here, it's, here is probably like the first usage of it, and, and it's so great. I love it. And you, like, really, you should just give the list give a listen to the music of Sonic Unleashed because, you know, you expect it, you expect, like, a Sonic game to have really good music. Of course it is. It's a Sonic game. Of course it's gonna have good music, no matter what the quality of the game. But, it's just here. It's kind of like going into, like, one of my more favorite soundtracks of the bunch, to be perfectly frank here. <laughs> That's because each area, each, mu each music track in the area fits so well, and it's just, I like it so much. I just, it's just, it's just too great. It's too great, man. But really, you should just, but you know, music is all subjective or whatever. You, you really should just give this a listen to yourself to see what you think. That's just how I feel about it. 
But anyway, if I can find the metal in plain sight, that will be great. Or the, at least the other one. But actually, actually, uh, if you slide down here, during the daytime only, by the way, uh, you'll be able to access a little bit of a shortcut that will get you to the, to the other side of that wall. So, that'll be really good for you to do. But yeah, I'm sorry if I'm, sorry if I'm trying to look for this metal, it's just, I gotta find it, man. I gotta find it. It's a sun metal. So, unless this is a Warhog level, you know what, screw it. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna bother, man. <laughs> I'm just not even gonna bother. But hey, at least you got to hear the awesomeness that is the saxophone. Which is appearing right now, and I should probably be quiet for it, but I can't. Because this is an LP and I need to be talking. Truer statement never been said. <laughs> but anyway, we wasted enough time here as it is, so we are pretty much going to stop things here. So, I say we switch over to daytime, and next time on Let's Play Sonic Unleashed, rather than go to Shamar, Professor Pickle said that another likely place that we can explore as of right now is indeed uh, Empire City. So, we should go ahead and give that place a little bit of a visit. You never know what we could find there. Of course. And, oh, yeah, there's the other moon metal. <laughs> Okay, so I will see you guys on the next time. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.